Yeah. Do you what do you want us to do? Turn off the videos? Um, if you feel like it, I don't know. I think it'll make it more like we can focus on the people who are presenting. I remember just like something about like spotlight. I remember I was watching that YouTube video, something about spotlight. If you turn them, like you oh I don't know about, okay, I know there's a spotlight, but it may, it may just be easier if everyone who's not presenting turns it off because if they're speaking, they're going to pop off on the top of your screen anyway. So they'll be the people who are on the main screen. So that might be a little bit easier. I don't know if there is a, I don't know if you know how to do spotlight survey, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. I'm doing spotlight for everyone. I've seen. And maybe I can make one of you the host and you can help me out. And pause the recording so we're not um, a student. Okay. Hare Krishna, kids. Welcome to Sunday School. Today we will, be, we will be discussing Chapter 2 of the Gita, which talks about the science of the soul. The science of the soul. What's that? Yeah, what is that? Let's talk about it. Lately, I've been experiencing a dire need of guidance in regards to spirituality. Will today's lesson help with that? I'm really glad you asked that. Today's lesson is perfect for that. In fact, the first fundamental step in spirituality is seeking help from a guru, me in this case. This is because as devotees, we all require help to awaken our spiritual consciousnesses, which can only truly begin once we seek guidance from our gurus. Well, aren't you our guru? Well, in a way I am, but gurus specifically come from an authentic lineage of teachers that are experts in spirituality. Wait, what does any of this have to do with the science of the soul? Well, let's dive into that right now. As I mentioned before, seeking guidance from a guru is the first fundamental step in spirituality. And in chapter two of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks about the most fundamental understanding of spiritual life, the spirit soul. Oh, wait, I've heard of the spirit soul before. I think I even know a verse about it. Chapter two, verse 24. Yes, perfect. That's a great verse to explain the spirit soul. Does anybody know the translation or meaning of this verse? I have it right here in my Bhagavad Gita. The translation of this here verse says that this individual soul is unbreakable and insoluble, and it can not and it can be burnt neither burned or dried. He is everlasting, present everywhere, unchangeable, immovable, and eternally the same. Jay, that's absolutely correct. In fact, Krishna uses the analogy of how just as a bird lives in a cage and a driver operates a car, we, the spirit soul, operate and utilize our body. Even though we, were we are living within our bodies, we are not the body. We are the spirit soul. That's so crazy. I never knew that. So if we are the soul and not the body, then what happens in the process of reincarnation? Do our souls live on? In chapter 2, verse 24, it clearly says that one's individual soul is indestructible and eternally the same. So it must live on. That is correct. Great job for paying attention. Until we come to the right realization of our true identities as spirit souls, we continue to experience the process of reincarnation in different material bodies in this material world. Now I know why I'm seeking God, why seeking guidance from a guru is the first fundamental step for spirituality. Gurus impart to us the wisdom of who we really are, the spirit soul. Agree, but how can I integrate this knowledge in my day-to-day -day life and escape the process of reincarnation? I'm glad you asked that. One must practice their spa dharma and sanatan dharma equally, which is their two dharmas or duties. Your spa dharma is your worldly duties, that, which consists of your responsibilities towards your family, friends, and society, so everything in the material world. On the other hand, your sanatan dharma is your spiritual duty, which includes your relationship with Krishna, nature, and all of the other spirit, spirit souls. So am I supposed to execute both of these dharmas side by side? Personally, I sometimes catch myself becoming too absorbed in my swa dharma. It, I, that I totally neglect my satana dharma. This can become really frustrating because I wish to engage in my spiritual duties, but I find that hard sometimes. Me too, but I also notice that my parents sometimes are so absorbed in their sanadhan dharma as if it is the only thing that matters rather than swadharma, which is material duties, right? Great questions. Well, 
In fact, the most efficient and progressive <clears throat> path is to be fully aware and alert of alert of both dharmas in order to get create a balance in both your material and spiritual life. This is making me kind of nervous. What happens if I do perform both of my dharmas? What happens if I don't? Well, the result of performing both duties with a balance, with both determination and faith, is that a person will become an Atmaram, a soul who is spiritually realized and finds pleasure in the self. Does anybody know what Atmaram is? Like, or what, um, what the benefits of being an Atmaram is? Nope. Okay, well, I'll tell you guys anyways. So in, the chap in chapter two, Krishna explains that the Atmaram is unaffected by happiness or distress, gain or loss, honor or dishonor. Essentially, the, the Atmaram, <laughs> essentially the Atmaram rids himself of all the qualities such as fear, anger, and attachment and com becomes completely absorbed in spiritual joy and transcendental consciousness. And that's all the purpose of the knowledge of the super spirit soul. Does anybody have any questions or realizations they want to share? I think that's an open-ended question to everyone. <laughs> no? Okay. Well, I hope you guys all learned about the spirit soul today. And if you guys have any questions, you can always look towards the Bhagavad Gita or ask the other spirit souls around you, your fellow devotee friends. <laughs> Okay, we're done. Jai, that was amazing. It was really perfect. And I really loved our teacher, Ashna. And I love how you, you know how to flow. Like it, 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 you didn't stop like at the verse and you didn't stop at like the, um, at the, to do the realization. Like it kept on flowing. Oh, I realized this. Oh, I know a shloka about this. And I think that was really a perfect move. It was very free flowing. Deepin Prudy, do you have any uh, thoughts you would like to give the group before we move on to the next one? Prabhuji, you're muted. Sorry. Yeah, no, I noticed that they had a perfect uh, team uh, spirit. Everybody played actually equal role. Uh, so we, I was realizing that that's not one of the criteria here to give them the marks. Maybe next time we should have that. How everybody play their active role. It's not just one person is leading. Uh, that's the sign of a very good team building activity. And uh, they were right on the subject matter. They didn't uh, derail themselves and chanted verses properly. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Such a pleasure. A round of applause for this group. I see there was also, I think Udbhav agreed with me that <laughs> you were a really good actor, uh, Ashna. So great job, everyone. I think I think also, yeah, everyone did a wonderful job. So I'm very happy to see that. Um, yeah, uh, so I have some wonderful uh, thoughts on the grades also. Um, so now we are going to move on to breakout room two. Breakout room two, I think it was, oh, everyone can see my beautiful face now. <laughs> so everyone can breakout room if you can turn on your uh, cameras. And I think Shonak, you are the leader for that. Yep. And I'll share my screen. So yeah, let me get that going. Requesting Iraj and everyone else to turn on their screen. Iraj Kishore, I think, was also in the group. Iraj is sadly not with us. He had to leave no. the call. But um, let's see, I think everybody else should be here though. Nandu is here. Ishan. Yeah. That group. That should be the group. So, I I think I said that <laughs> weird. Iraj is definitely with us, but like he's not in the call. All right. Um, chapter nine, devotional service. So, um, yeah, Drew, you want to get us started? Uh, sure. All right. So our group had uh, chapter nine, devotional service. So we want to like start this off by having all of you guess our verse. So take a close look at all these pictures and try putting it together to see what verse we have. 
this takes a bit of audience part of the patient, but you basically have to guess based on the clues we give you what verse we're going to give you in the next slide. So I'll, I'll, this, I'll make it kind of obvious. So we have leaves, some fruits, flower, and water. So now what could that possibly mean? Chapter nine. Verse 9.26 or something. All right. Yeah, that's, that should be good enough. I mean, yeah, you'll, you'll see right now. Um, so yeah, the verse from chapter 9, 9.26. So now what is this verse? I think I have it memorized. So it's patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhakta prayacheti tadam bhakti uparatam asnami paratatmanaha. Now, Ishan, if you could explain the translation. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so the, uh, the, the translation about this verse would be like that, like if one offers me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, a fruit or water, I will accept it. And like, like a deeper meaning into this of what like Krishna is actually trying to say is like, um, no matter like what the thing that you offer him, like, of course, it has to be like vegetarian. But like no matter what anything that you offer, um, anything that you offer him, even if it's with like love and devotion, like that's the main thing that counts. And love and devotion is basically what Krishna is looking for, which is even more important than like the type of food. Um, yeah, just to begin our initial realization and reflection. So Nandu, if you could take us with that. So in our realization, we uh, stated that even the smallest of offerings can help and go a long way. So this is also seen in the story of Lord Ramachandra and the squirrel. So when uh, Lord Ramachandra was uh, building the bridge across uh, the sea to reach uh, 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 Sri Lanka, uh, he ordered a bunch of monkeys to construct the bridge. And these monkeys were carrying huge uh, stones and like uh, boulders uh, to build this bridge. And there was this squirrel that was carrying pebbles and like small grains of sand and was trying to help out the construction of this bridge any way he could. So these monkeys uh, thought this squirrel was getting in the way. So he told, so the monkeys told the squirrels to just move out the way. But the squirrel wanted to assist this uh, construction as little as possible as little as he, as he could. So these monkeys uh, got upset and they threw this squirrel away in the air. And fortunately, uh, Lord Ramachandra caught the squirrel and uh, told the monkeys that even though these little pebbles may seem like not a lot of contribution, these little pebbles are keeping these huge uh, boulders in place because they're uh, put between the cracks of the boulder. So they're helping keep this uh, bridge from falling. So basically these little contributions uh, still get the job done and Lord Ramachandra views them in a very positive light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, very well said. And now we're gonna move on to our other realization. This one's gonna be focusing more on how it can impact our lives directly. So Drew, you can, you can go with that. So it does not exactly matter what you offer, but the way you offer it and why you offer it and the amount of feeling you put into it, because let's say in the real world, it doesn't matter what advantage you have. Say, for example, if you play a sport and you want to play at a really high level, it just matters on the determination you have and the, and the heart you put into it, like getting there instead of like, so you cheat it towards it. Just um, same with Krishna. He doesn't exactly look for riches. He just looks for feelings. And yeah. All right. I think you cut out there a bit for me. I don't know if that's for everybody else as well. But I think everybody got like the, the basic gist of it. But like, yeah, just there's certain things in life where um, not everybody has a like everybody has a fair like playing field and if you put like your determination and heart into something that can really make you successful no matter what advantage or no matter how much money you have so yeah that's our main realization and reflection from chapter nine and yeah hope you guys enjoyed thank you thank you all so much for presenting 
Um, it was really, really nice to hear from Kishore because I, I feel like we don't hear much from him. And Kishore, you really explained the story so beautifully and so uh, perfectly. I was really impressed. Um, yeah, thank you, N Nandu. It was really nice to hear, your, uh, hear you speak so nicely on that. I also really appreciated uh, Dhruv, your realization, it's not what you offer, but how you offer it. Um, Ishan, I also loved your how you spoke about the uh, realization, even part of the verse. That was very nicely done in Shonak, of course. Thank you for leading it and for having that nice guessing game in the beginning. It was really nicely done. I know, I know it was very difficult if someone is dropping off in the call in the middle of the call, it's really annoying, but still you guys stuck to it, so I'm very happy. Did you have any words you'd like to say to Shonak and the group? It was very well done. I am very happy to see the, the quality of the pictures. Those were chosen. Um, and I wanted to ask one of the team members if they can explain a bit more about that picture, the last picture. It was shown before also. Uh, lady and Krishna standing and there's some something going on. Can uh, Ishan Sharma explain us that picture, what's going on? Sharma? Uh, yes, pra yes, Prabhuji, I could explain it. Uh, so mm -hmm. like uh, that's the, the past time when uh, there was like a, a fruit lady, she came to uh, uh, Lord Krishna's house, and then she was offering fruits to um, Nanda Maharaj in uh, in like exchange of grain. And then Krishna said that he wanted some mangoes, so he took like a like a little like like a little hand of his little hand, and he grabbed like as many grains as he could, and he was running towards her. And the grains were falling on the ground one by one, and like soon when he came to her, he barely had any grains. But she still accepted it and because she saw like the love and devotion. She accepted it and she was like, Yes, thank you so much. And she like she let Krishna have some fruits, um, like the one that he wanted. And then like soon, like her like little bucket of uh fruits, it all turned uh, transformed into like jewels and diamonds and precious gold. And then she was really, really happy, and which shows how like such little things like giving fruits to Krishna and like accepting the love and the devotion can lead to bigger, more uh, happy things. Yeah. Prabhu, muted again. Ishan, thank you so much. Really, really impressed. Super nice. You guys are storyteller. Ishor. Uh, he sure told perfectly, he told perfectly. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. All glories to you. Okay, thank you, breakout room two. Um, so the next uh, group we have is breakout room three. So breakout room three, our leader is Udbhav. Um, uh, so Udbhav, you asked me to share your presentation on the screen, let me do that. Also, it should be the one I just shared, not the one from before. Is it copy of Gita breakout room? Uh, yeah, that should be it. Okay. So who else? So Panaga, uh, is there someone else also in your group? Right. Uh, Rohit. Yeah. Rohit. Rohit, are you there? Jai. All right, um, over to you. Yeah, so this is Krishna's opulences. Uh, next slide. So <clears throat> in our Bhagavad Gita packets, the acronym for chapter 10 was C, and the second E uh, stood for everything, in which it says the following quote. So in response, Krishna describes the most prominent among his limitlessness, all-pervading opulence, by doing this, he explains how one can actually think of him, meditate on him, and see him everywhere. It is not that Krishna is physically all these things he mentions, but rather that he is the source of the opulence of these things, their strength, fame, wealth, and so on. 
So pretty much what uh, this quote means is that um, Krishna does not fully describe himself and his, his opulences. And these visual representations that he gives, uh, they only hint at his true power. And also, so when you go through these verses and you read them, um, these are not the full capacity of his opulence. These are just to show that because we humans only know that out of like all the birds, Garud is like the most powerful of them all. So out of all the birds, my power would be comparable to Garud. But in reality, his power is much more than Garud. So that's one of like the 82 examples. And these 82 examples still fall very short of his true glories. Okay, next one. Yeah, we can go to the next one. Okay, so um, this is uh, what in, this is verse ten point four one. So, yad yad vibhutamat satvam shrimad orjitam eva va tad tad eva agachatvam mama tejo unsa sabavam. So the translation is certainly wherever and whatever is majestic, beautiful, or magnificent, you must certainly know that all these manifestations arise but a fraction fraction of my glory. So, like Udbhav said in the last slide, like Krishna is just so powerful and it's just a fraction of his glory. So the next verse that we have chosen is verse 10.42. Atava bahuna tena kim jant ne tatava juna vishtabhyaham vidam krishnam yekam shnena stito jagat. The translation reads as follows But what is what need is there, Arjuna, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire universe. So, like what Udbhav and Parth mentioned, this sloka specifically is emphasizing that. As a devotee, many, many devotees might think that they're not really important in Ishkan as they're slowly developing the congregation, their, their association with uh, more senior devotees in Ishkan. And they may get some of these questions and they may question uh, what having all this detailed knowledge, but Krishna is answering that question by saying that there is a value and that value is realized through meditating on to Lord Sri Krishna. So that can be done through your spiritual activities, whether that be chanting, participating in arti, playing an instrument like the Murdanga or Karthals or the harmonium even. There's a lot of different ways you can, uh, you can connect and show that you do have that dedication in your, in your spiritual service, your uh, devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Yes, yeah, so those are our realizations on these verses specifically. Uh, next slide, please. So um, this is just a final thought, and this doesn't come directly from the Bhagavad Gita, but uh, this book that was written by uh, Radhanath Swami. So while there's many opulences in this in the Bhagavad Gita itself, and they're very beautifully worded and they're very mem mesmerizing. As devotees, we also know how to look beyond them because while Krishna, yes, he is Garuda of all birds, Ganga of all rivers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we also know to look beyond just his power, his fame. We also know to look for his love, his devotion towards his own devotees because that's the more important aspect that we interact with. And as devotees, that's the aspect that we want to think about, talk about, and meditate on. So, uh, like I've emphasized here, uh, in the Gita, so Krishna goes um, through 82 opulences, and this book, it waters down the Supreme Personality of Godhead into these three aspects. The all-pervading, or the omnipresent, same thing. Uh, the localized guardian in the heart, or I believe the super soul. And the, person, uh, and the personal reciprocator of love, which is himself. So, I wanted to ask the audience a question. Uh, what purpose does each description uh, serve as they both describe Krishna, but for different, uh, different audiences? 
and they stimulate various thoughts at different Krishna conscious levels. And by the two descriptions, I mean uh, one being the 82 opulences that Krishna gives about himself, and the second description being this one by uh, Radha Nath Swami. So this is to the audience. Well, I'll just take a shot at it for the 82 opulences which Krishna gives for himself. It basically just helps give whoever is reading the whatever he's saying, it helps give like some sort of reassurance that he really knows what he's talking about because he wants to like back up what he's saying based on all his qualities. So you can look at it. At, I remember when I was giving this presentation, I saw it as kind of a subtle flex. But basically, that, that's basically what he's trying to do to basically just, yeah, just reassure that like he really knows what he's doing here. So, yeah. I didn't quite catch no, what you meant between the two descriptions. So you said 182 opulences and what's the other one? So on the slide, you can see the three bullet points. Um, so in this book, it says that this is who God or Krishna is. He is uh, so he comes in three forms, uh, the all pervading, the localized guardian in the heart and the personal reciprocator of love. So Krishna describes himself with 82 opulences, 82 variations of like, out of this, I'm the best of this thing. Out of these, I'm the best of that thing. But uh, this Swami, he, uh, instead of going through 82 versions of like how cr cool Krishna is, he waters it down to these three points. So why are there different ways of looking at Krishna? Like, why are we looking at him in different ways? Why is there one version where we have 82 opulences versus uh, this way, which is just three places where we find Krishna? Does that help? Yeah, that helps. Thank you. So does anyone want to take a stab at like why this second version is a different way of looking at Krishna? Like, why do we look at him like this rather than his 82 opulences? I guess. Um, so if you think about it, 82 is a big number. <laughs> So there's a lot to include. So I think they, these three kind of boil it down. And I also think 82, it's more kind of as a list of his um, aspects, whereas these three, uh, these three descriptions, they're more personalized. Because if you think about it, all pervading, localized guardian in the heart, and then the personal reciprocator of love. These are all things that are more personal as opposed to just qualities. So if it's like, I don't know, I can't, the way I'm con comparing this to is like a college application. Um, was that, I was thinking like the 82 opulences are like your, um, your grade, your GPA and all of that. And then these three, they're more like the essay that tells more about Krishna's um, inner heart or more about his personality. That's something that we can relate to. So just a stat, but I'm not sure if it's correct. No, I really like that take on it. It made, it makes sense too, because I kind of saw it as um, the 82 opulences, therefore the, um, it's kind of from materialistically seeing Krishna, like, oh, what is he? He is this, he's like Shiva of all the gods or this or that, like, it's a materialistic way of thinking of him, but these three kind of personalize him. Like Krishna is not just like some guy in some other world and he owns us, but it's more like, oh, we can connect with him. It, this makes it more connectable. And that's kind of what I was going at with the different Krishna conscious levels. I feel like to introduce someone to Krishna consciousness, you want to show that, hey, we worship a God who has these 82 opulences and they'll be like mind blown. That's awesome. But to a more senior devotee, you want to go at it with this description where it's like, Oh, someone I can love someone I can serve someone I can connect with. So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I wanted to introduce with these two takes. And now I'll hand it over to Mahalakshmi and Tanaga.
Okay, so we have charades, and anybody could guess any of these six characters that we have. These, I mean, not characters, but like, you know, anybody could guess who each person we are representing through these pictures that me and Panega drew. Um, so someone could stop with the top left picture. So this is a snake, right? I'm seeing in the chat. There's always no hair. So this is a snake, and there are there is a hill behind it. Uh, there is some a big mountain behind it, I think. So does anyone know what Krishna says? I am the blank of the serpents. And I'll give you a hint. Um, the mountain, um, I think, is is Mandara. If that helps anyone. I think we need to deploy the method where we call on people randomly. <laughs> I don't know. I maybe. I, I, yeah, you can. You can go ahead. Um, Sean, but you're super close, but like, um, there's a name, there's like a snake, specific snake that is the king of all snakes. Was, Isn't that Kali? No, he was used during, uh, the churning, like the, the churning of the ocean. Is it Ananta? No, he wasn't used during the churning of the ocean. Very close though. Yeah. Okay, Ananta. Should I just give the answer? I think. Um, yeah. No, uh, no Prabhuji said it in the chat. Oh. Yeah. But yeah, it's the snake of Shiji, yeah. I believe. Vasuki. Yeah. Um, and on Vasuki's head, there's a gem called Nagamani. And as Survi said, it's called, it's this phrase um, connects back to the topic because it's I am the Vasuki of all snakes. So I'm the king of all snakes. Yeah. Um, so the second picture, as you could see, is a sun and a moon, but um, we know that's a sun and a moon, but Krishna describes himself as both of these, but it's a Sanskrit topic. So there's Sanskrit name for both, if anyone knows. I'm not sure if I'm right, but is it Prabhasmi Sashi Surya Yo? Is you got part of it right. You got Surya right, but there's another phrase surya is right which describes the sun but the moon. okay so the moon is that what is the moon in uh, sanskrit yeah, yeah we got it Chandra. yeah that's right um so the surya is the sun for example many people would do surya namaskar which is praying for the sun um, God and the Chandra is the moon around the summer around Samara temple we have Chandra Vahan so it's taking the deities out at night so that's what it represents the night so it's an example so the next picture we have an elephant and he's one of the he's he's one of Krishna's great devotees and I'll give you a little hint by saying a lotus flower because he offered a lotus flower to Krishna through danger. Is it Gajendra? Yeah. All right then. Um, this relates back to our topic because Gajendra, um, he passed, he like goes through the cycle of life. So it's birth and death. So that is what Krishna is and describes so that's the relation behind it. And a the next photo, which is the Trishula, and there's a Damaru, which is a drum that has a drum on both sides. And I feel like anybody could guess who this is, but you guys could take a try. Yeah, I usually got it. 
And now uh, the next one is the king of all birds. Udbav gave it away in the beginning of the presentation. Who was paying attention? That is the question. Garuda? Yeah. Um, quick relation. So in many temples, they have a Garuda or a bird um, that signifies it's protecting the temple. Um, it's like a sign of prosperity as just every temple has it, especially around South India. There's some temples here that also help it, but in South India, there's many temples that have Garuda as a bird. So um, it's like it protects the temple. So it's um, a very significant object. And now the last one, it's a Veena, and this person carries it around his around the galaxy or like around the universe. Yeah, Dave Smith Prabhu got it. So I, I just have a question. Um for the Trishula and the um like does does Krishna say like of the king of elephants I am Gajendra? Of the rishis, I am Narada. Is that what you mean by like um, this? The the pictures for Narada, yes, that's true. For Gajendra, I I just put Gajendra as an uh, as a person who like you know looks at Krishna for you know I, you know he's a devotee. He's a really well known devotee, and he's a person who's you know who looks up at Krishna. You know, like. I guess sort of as we do, but you know, he's like on a totally different level, you know, when it comes to, you know, being a really great devotee. So I feel like I just put him in there. So that makes sense. Okay. Thank you for putting that up. I think in one of the verses he says on um, now it's uh, Indra's elephant Ravat. Indra's uh, Oh yeah. Who uh, does say that? Well yeah. this this could be this could be Aravat also. Yeah, <laughs> that could be a cloud. And it could be around with the team. Uh, Udva, can you label all of them, six of them, with their, uh, you know, Ravat and Chandrama, Surya, Vasuki? Yeah, I can go back in the presentation and add text box. If you can take a picture and then send to the group also, this is very nice. Okay, I'll send it. Amazing. Okay, so this final slide is just shows Krishna's opulence. And here we could see how, like, we could see all the universes. And this really just shows that Krishna everywhere, he's everywhere in the, both in the spiritual and material world. And by just looking at something, you could just, like, I feel like being a really great devotee, just by looking at something, you could, like, and if you see Krishna through it, I feel like you just met, you can meditate upon Krishna anywhere. And I feel like just knowing his opulences, that's that really just I feel like that really helps you set a nice path for yourself, I guess. That's why. Yeah. Can you also say that this picture on the left, on my left, I don't know, maybe it's on your right, is the universal form of Krishna? His Virat Rupa? Yeah, I, I believe think. it is. Yeah, same. Amazing. You guys are good with Google search here. You found the best pictures. Anything more, Udva? Uh, no, that should be all. Thank you. Uh, does anyone have questions, maybe? Because if we have no questions, then yeah, we're done. Yeah, I don't think anyone has questions, so we're done.
All right, Krishna, I'm sorry. I had to step away from the computer for a second. Uh, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation, Group 4. I um, mean, sorry, Group 3. It was really amazing and really well done. You guys are all like philosophical whiz kids. It was really amazing to hear all of you. Um, I did, Dave King Prozzi, were you able to say a few words to them? Yes, yes, I did. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say I loved um, I loved what Udhav said in the beginning and also Mahalakshmi reiterated at the end that these visual representations of Krishna through the river, through the sea, through everything, it helps us remember him more. So like when I see, you know, this light or when I see like the sun, I can remember, oh, Krishna says he's the light of the sun or things like that. So that was really beautifully said. Um, I also loved Rohit's extension about ISKCON and like um, also I really appreciated what uh, Parth's like amazing uh, determination and like I know Parth you don't uh, read a lot of verses but you said that verse so well and with um, so much clarity I was I'm really like impressed it was really well done thank you Parth I also wanted to add like because the way you said it Survi uh, this uh, the sun it reminded me of this time. I don't I don't know where I heard this, but it was like some devotees were walking with Prabhupada and they were looking at the sunrise or sunset. I forget which one. And they saw how beautiful the sunrise was looking. And Prabhupada's reaction was, if that's how beautiful the sun is, imagine how beautiful our, uh, Krishna would be. Wow. Because Krishna is the source of him, of the Surya Deva. Beautiful. Beautifully said. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I really loved it. And yeah, Parth, thank you for that verse. I really hope I can hear more verses from you. Maybe oh, it was only because of uh, DNP. So. He pushed you to do the verse. He pushed you out of your comfort zone, huh? No, because you, you usually always play that, like, you know, that, that bad kid in the in the dramas and all. So maybe you'll play, like, the Gyani or the Yogi in the next play. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Uddha will be the bad kid and he'll be, like, the good guy. Maybe, guy. maybe. <laughs> Jai. Um, I want to see Udbuf play Ravan. I want to <laughs> it's going to happen. That'd be good. That would be hilarious. Ten heads. Gold. I mean, Udbuf was gold. like a Shastri. He was like a like a big like brain. He was like a think tank too. So like it wouldn't be. <laughs> You're never going to lose that in think tank thing. Um, all right. So now I would like to uh, introduce our breakout room four. They have a very interesting presentation prepared for us, and I'm really excited to see what they share. So off to you, breakout room four. Uh, I can present um, or share. One, two, screen. three, four. Isn't there, yeah, is, there's, is there someone else in your group or that's all? Or oh, um, Yeah, we have Safi too. I don't know if he's here with us right now, but. Oh, um, okay, that's not great, okay. Can you see my screen? Beautiful. Okay. So um, the verse, we're do, uh, the chapter we're doing is chapter 18, and yeah, it's by us. Um, so our verse is um, verse 65, and it's Manmana bhava madbhakta madhyaji mam namaskuru mame vashya si satyante pratijane priyosime. So the translation is, always think of me, be devoted to me, worship me, and offer me obeisances to me. Doing so, you will certainly come to me. This is my pledge to you, for you are very dear to me. So for the application, uh, so there's a lot of things happening in this verse, but one thing that we kind of boiled it down to is that the whole Bhagavad this verse kind of just boils down all of the Bhagavad Gita. And so, um, and so uh, one of the main things that we took away was that from this verse, it says, you should always be thinking of Krishna. And then we thought that one way to do that is to love Krishna. If you genuinely love Krishna, then you will always be thinking about him and you'll always be happy. You will not have to engage in material attachments and um, material goods. So one thing is, one ma major thing we took away is to, that you have to learn to love Krishna. And uh, that's why we included the picture of Krishna and all of his friends because they genuinely um, loved him. And then love doesn't, it's not necessarily the romantic relationship we think of. It could be something 
as a brother, as a friend, as a father. Um, so they all thought of Krishna as his friend and they were always thinking about Krishna. They were sharing his food, their food with them. And so one thing is that, okay, that was possible back then, but how do we do it today with so many distractions? And so one thing we said that just little actions can help us become, uh, have more love for Krishna. And so one of that is just doing offerings, chanting, doing kirtan, and also talking about Krishna with other people. Because once we communicate with other people, we have to channel our thoughts and express that. And in that way, we can kind of realize our love for Krishna. So, yeah. Yeah, moving on. So, um, at, so basically, at the end of chapter 18, because we're talking about the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna asks, well, he doesn't actually ask, but for our case, Krishna says, so what's the moral learned here? All right, so what's the moral? So um, we made like a little rap. So a little Arjuna on the beat. Oh, uh, it makes sense now. I have to ditch my attachments, focus on the process. That's what it is. Affection, love, and devour. Teach me the way of the attachments. Forget the greed, forget the want. Make sure Maya doesn't haunt. Every day is a wacky ride. We just hold on and surf the tide. I have to dedicate my time. Think about you. You're rapping on you're muted. <laughs> oh, I unmuted. Every day is a wacky ride. We just hold on and surf the tide. I have to dedicate my time, think about you, but out of genuine effect, don't force it to. Hold up, but that doesn't mean I give up everything and head to the woods. I still have to be present with the material goods. All right. It's, it is my dharma, Svasanatana. I must balance uh, in order to live proper. He say to incorporate you in every aspect. You say to give up all religious sects. You're right. Th those will give our so no soul prospects. Seek your refugees, seek your devotees, my scriptures and disciples. And read the Bhagavad Gita, Holy Bible. Yeah, in conclusion, get seek to get rid of all delusion. Get rid of all the conclusion. Um oh Krishna, please clear of me clear my illusion. Thanks for your help. I'm gonna head out now and put that arrow through his big fat mouth. Arjuna signing out. That was beautiful. And yeah, that's our presentation. If you have any questions, you could ask them. All right. Does anyone have any questions for little Arjuna or is it? Lil Juna, <laughs> does anyone have any questions for Lil Arjuna on the beat? That was really great. I didn't mean to click it. I, I just like hit my keyboard by accident. Maybe like the space bar, yeah. Yeah, my bad. I'm so impressed. I am hearing some, L L Ashna says fire. Akersh is like LOL, <laughs> roasted. Who are we roasting? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Who came up with this proper ra? Uh? That's my question. What is this? Like, I must balance ra uh, in order to live a proper ra. Uh? Who came up with that? Was that oh. like the last minute? No, because like Shambhavi, she's like, she's like helping us out a little bit. And we didn't know what, what rhymes with Sanatana. So we just added to like the words. And the uh, at the end. Uh. Yeah. Guilty as charged. Sometimes rappers do that, I guess. Like they change it. Like chocolate becomes like chocolate or something like that. So it was very, very modern. SoundCloud rapper time, Uzbek says. Dhruv says, let's add a beat and publish the song. Yes, I agree. We can like we can like make it like an artist SoundCloud, Lil Arjuna, and like post all of our realization. Who's, yeah. Whose idea was this? I think it was our Tashan Koti. Yeah, it was just Hank's. Thank you. Just Hank? He was all for it. I thought it would be Varun. No, 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 no. I don't listen to rap. <laughs> that mumble jumble. I listen to pop music. I'm a good kid. Yeah, okay, Varun. Okay, Varun. 
I like the best of the line I like is, I have to dedicate my time, think about you, but out of genuine effect, don't force it to. I like that. Jai, a true admirer of Raf, Dev Kinan Prabhuji. That's very genuine. Uh, the rapper should be very genuine from the, you know, it should be from the heart. Mm. It works in the heart. So somebody said it from the heart. And I like that. Thank you. Thank you for being honest, 100%. Thank you, Prabhuji. That, that what matters to the Krishna most, the honesty. Amazing. Yeah, I'm really impressed. What is everyone else's favorite lines in the thing? Maybe you can put it in the chat. You're looking at it right now. What are your favorite lines from the... I'm liking that the second to last one on the first, like, the first half. The But that doesn't mean I give up everything and head to the woods because I don't think we emphasized it much, but, like, it's kind of differentiating between, like, the false idea of Tiag versus the real idea of Tiag, which is, like, it's not to renounce. And like, I remember Arjuna was saying, like, let me just go in the woods. But that's not true renunciation. True renunciation is when you detach yourself from your material possessions. So, yeah. Yeah. That was beautiful. I also really like that line, too. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, I'll share my favorite line. Just from, like, a musical standpoint, I like, I mean, just from like the rhyme, I like the seek your refugee, seek your devotees, my scriptures and disciples. Read the Bhagavad Gita or Holy Bible. I liked, mm. like, I just liked how that flowed. It flowed pretty nice. Seek your refuge, seek your devotees. Yeah, I like that too. Disciples. Yeah, you're right. That it, that does flow really nice. Noise. Um, Ashna, what do you like? She, she said fire or something. Oh, I liked what Shonak said. Um, I had the exact same thing that he said. The whole thing is pretty good too. I like it a lot. It's really clever. The whole thing is fire. <laughs> I remember when I did some sort of rap like this back in like the New York trips. Ashta, you remember that? We were yeah, like, sure. Yeah. Like, I still have that in my uh, in my notes. <laughs> we that whole rap when we went to, yeah, that was fun. That was a good one too. That was a good one. But we have some new rappers coming from Sevenish to Prabhu's class. They may overtake you, oldies. <laughs> so I see uh, Dhruv is saying, seek to get rid of all delusion. Where's that? It's the third line from the bottom in the second. In conclusion, seek to get rid of all delusion. Yeah, I love that too. Get rid of confusion. Oh, that goes well. That In conclusion, seek to get rid of all delusion. Get rid of the confusion. Oh, Krishna, please clear my illusion. Oh, beautiful. So we can post these on our WhatsApp group. Are they saved somehow? I can take a picture if you want and just put it. Please. Yeah, I think I think people are having uh, some conversations because we have the rap writers here. Um, can someone tell me who is Arjuna speaking about? Whose mouth? Whose big fat mouth? Is it's not Pitamaha because he loves Pitamaha like anything or Drona? Is it Jayadrata? Duryodhana. Duryodhana. He's always boasting about how he's so great at the court of us. Yeah. Hmm. We should hear back from the court of It could be a full-on rap battle. Yeah, we could have like a rap battle between the core of us and Arjuna. Yeah, that'd be great. And then Krishna will just be like the mediator between them. Wonderful. Jai. And with that amazing rap, I think we are at the end of our... Um, at the end of our presentations, Devkin and Proji, would you like to give any last thoughts to this group and also the groups of all presented? You know, I'm really impressed, really, really impressed with the, all the presentations, their creativity, their wisdom, realizations, Chanting verses, they found the right verses mm. corresponding to the topic and practical realizations on those verses. Um, it's uh, it's mind blowing. It's really mind blowing. I'm so impressed. Really proud that uh, we have we have 
our is con devotees you know to who can think and go that deep in the realizations and uh, um uh, especially this rap and then this this whole charade of pictures and you know these it's a uh, visualizing you know giving some experiential learning for all of us to learn the topic um it's very very powerful i'm not personally i'm not so good at these creative artistic ideas so it but it impresses me a lot because you have to think out of the box um and those of you who have the ability and you're using it for krishna's a uh, pleasure for the pleasure of the devotees for the pleasure of your own other friends it's it's uh, glorious i'm really impressed we should do this more and more once a month we should have this thank you thank you thank you really glad thank you does anyone have any last thoughts i know it's getting pretty late but i would like to open up does anyone have any doubts questions or comments or you know kishore you have anything you want to say your hand is raised oh that was on our extent okay all right does anyone else have any at least maybe the leads can share you know one minute uh, the realization also about the team building and this break room idea from the technology perspective if you can share one two lines three lines that would be also nice for you know take home to uh, for our next session so please go ahead Ash yeah i can go first um so honestly when survey sent out the like what we were going to be doing today i was like i wonder how this is going to go because usually when we do like these group like things and in person in class like you know it's we usually run out of time and it, like we kind of get distracted and then you know it's, it's kind of rushed but um I think the breakout rooms was a really good idea because we were with just our group only and everyone was able to like focus on their own roles and everything um, and I thought it was pretty successful from everyone so from my perspective of everyone's groups um and yeah I, I don't know I, I enjoyed doing it um I was pretty like I didn't expect such a great outcome just because I know the past of us like all getting distracted because we're all together during Sunday school in person. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy about this and I'd be happy to do it again. And I'm glad that it was a good team building exercise as well. Yeah, adding on to what Ashna said, I feel like um, this, I feel like the presentations really got everyone's ideas in one place. And like, I feel like, like in general, like we all have our own ideas, but we don't really think like, like someone else might be thinking something while someone else might be thinking something else. And I feel like this way we got a bunch of ideas and we were able to combine them and maybe like put them together to find um, whichever one worked best. So like in our case, like the rap was Shashank's idea, but then everyone, well, mostly everyone, I did it, but everyone else contributed to the rap. And like, so it was like, I think it's just where all your ideas can come together and you can make a better, a much more, Beautiful outcome. All right, uh, going off what Ashna and Ayushi said, I also think it was like a relatively major success. I also want to appreciate sort of be going off in the chat, very enthusiastic, like throughout everybody's presentation. It helped spread a lot of positivity, and yeah, just it, it just helped encourage whoever was presenting if you could read it, and yeah, it just it was good to read that. And honestly, yeah, similar to what Ashna was saying, I didn't really know how it was going to turn out when my mom initially sent me the message about like oh we're going to be doing group projects and stuff in the middle of Sunday school but yeah it, it definitely came out better than I thought it would and I feel that like yeah I really surpassed my expectations of what we could do as Sunday school when it comes to making presentations in a, such a short time frame so yeah yeah when I got the message I was like in Edison and my parents were uh, grocery shopping so I was like oh, this should be a fun 12 a.m exercise but then, a little bit more volume, a little more volume. Okay, uh, is that better? Okay, so <clears throat> yeah. I got the message at Edison, and I was like, okay, this should be fun. Like, 
12 a.m. stuff because that's usually what I do. And then, so I was working on the presentation and then today in class when we actually like, I saw the structure of how this was gonna happen. I like, I was a little iffy, but then when I, when it all started falling together, I was actually pretty happy with what we got because, and I think we should value how, yeah, we are team leaders, but also our group mates also have like really good ideas because I remember when we were discussing the uh, create the creative bit, um, I couldn't really come up with anything, but I believe it was Mahalakshmi who said we should do like a charades and that was like pretty amazing. And we saw it like, it turned out pretty well. So like, we should all value that we all have creative minds. And I like how we put that together today, but because instead of doing our basic presentation Kahoot, then we did a presentation in charades or like we all did something special. So I like that. So. You're on mute, mute privileges. So Shank Marat. Yes, privileges. You want to share something? All right. So, um, I really think this is like a really creative idea. Like um, Sunday school, like many people, they'll feel like, oh, this is just, just another boring class. But I really feel like Surabi goes out of her way to make this. Excuse like, me? Who said Sunday school is a boring class? Who <laughs> said, who told you that? I'm just saying like the normal stereotype of like any class is that it's boring. Okay, okay. I hear you, Shashank. I hear you. I really feel like um, we should be really grateful for Surabi and all that she's doing um, to go out of her way and try to make class educational and fun for us. And I really, um, if it weren't for Surabi's like efforts and everything, um, I wouldn't look forward to Sunday school. So I'd like to thank like David Kanan and Prabhu and Surabi for like thinking of these. We appreciate your brutal honesty, Sushant. Thanks for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And let's really from the bottom of the core of our hearts, let's thank our Surabi. Sundarachal for thinking through and making it happen and making it uh, uh, engaged for all of us. So we really